Welcome to the OKD Working Group Documentation Subgroup Meeting for April 19th of 2022. And uh, let's do a quick review of current projects of removing the community repo. Uh, Brian. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think we're just trying to work out what we're doing in terms of community officials. Um, that's the only bit I think is outstanding. Um, we're, we've agreed we're going to drop membership <clears throat> in terms of um, we don't really have an active membership role at the minute for each of the things. It's whoever turns up and wants to participate does. However, we do need to list the officials. And I think there is the how do we get the officials and does every working group have a set of officials um, question. But other than those two, the community repo can go. Um, the two documents um, in terms of code of conduct and um, the charter, that's in the OKD site now. So that repo could effectively go now um, so do you, as far as I'm concerned. Do you need someone to make a pull request to remove it or? We need somebody with admin access that can archive it or delete it, depending what you want to, how you want to do it. Let's archive it. So, Diane, you have access on that. So, if you could uh, yeah, archive yeah. it when you get the the signal, that, that would be awesome. All right. Which then does so leave we us might with the. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Go ahead, sorry, Jim. I said it does leave us with the. How are we going to resolve the? Officers working group. Well, I was going to send something out in regards to that to the working group, but I still don't have access to social media um, to be able to promote uh, the fact that that we're that members will be able to vote. I can post something on the mailing list, but I also wanted to post something on social media. So I don't have but access to the Twitter yet. And Diane, you were gone. But the gist is, what we want to do uh -huh. is have an official election of the, uh, or not election per se, but um, yeah, I guess it would be election, asking the chairs of the main group who they would like as the chairs for the subgroups, right? And yeah. people have thrown their hats in. Sandra has thrown his hat in for the virtualization. Um, I'm assuming that CRC would be, um, I don't know that we have one for that one. But <clears throat> once we get those chairs for the subgroups, then we would be able to put that into the document and close okay. things down to the community repo. Cool. Um, so uh, I apologize. I thought I had already given you the Twitter username password. Um, I guess Did that did, didn't really? happen. So just I thought that happened um, months, like a month ago, uh, which is about how long it's been since I've been on one of these calls. So um, I I don't. Do you remember how you shared it out to me? I don't. Ah, uh, boy, that would be asking a lot. Let me just see if I can. If I'm, well, I'll we'll deal in. with it. We'll deal with it async. But I'm trying to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh. So yeah. So at this point, then we can move forward. Um. Just send something out that says these folks are looking to be. Um chairs of their respective working groups. And we could do a binding, non-binding vote, kind of like the uh, Kubernetes yeah. or the CNCF uh, TOC does. Yep. So basically, you know, people can voice their opinion even if they're not <coughs> chairs of the main group, right? Mm-hmm. That'll that work fine. Legit? Okay. Well, totally sounds much more legit than what we've done in the past. So i um, happy, happy to have it be legitimized. Um. All right, good deal. Moving on to the next thing is uh, uh, but, but, but technical technical documentation. How is that coming along, Brian, with your fork? Um, <clears throat> so I'm still working on it. Um, I haven't actually done much. Sorry, John, I haven't accepted your pull request. Um, that's just me not not having time. What I'm trying to do is <clears throat> I'm trying to create a work example in the documentation. And what I'm looking to do is take the console um, module 
and just change the documentation link from docs.okd.io to okd.io. So we've got something that's very visible. It's obvious whether the change is in or not. And I'm going to do the two routes, updating existing cluster and create a new um, installer, which are the two routes to actually getting a custom built module live. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, and I just want to get that working. And then I'll explain how you do it. And then a worked example of, of doing it, which might work out to be a YouTube video. Um, I'm not sure yet, but in terms of, but I, I just think there's too much information just to have it purely written as a sort of an abstract. So I want to do a, a worked example. And I thought something visual on the console is something that's very, very easy to understand. It's obvious if it's worked or not, because if you hit the link and you get to the docs, it hasn't worked. If you get to okd.io, it had worked. Um, I haven't got it working yet. <laughs> That's so mainly because that, so it was easy. That pull request Sorry, has most of the second way yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Um, mainly because it was Easter and I had other things yeah. planned over the last weekend. So oh, um, I'll work. Yeah, I'll work on trying to get that done. Um, when I get it done, I'll push it all up, um, pull the, take the pull request in, um, and hopefully we can then push that onto OKD.io as the start of the technical documentation on the main site. So that's the plan. It's moving, but Easter break. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and, oh, go ahead. I, I was gonna say, unless anybody else has a suggestion of that's a stupid idea, do something different. Um, to me, visual is always good. Yeah, it's a starting point. I mean, that way you have something to show and then you have something to build on. So then we can throw other examples. The uh, the installer itself is interesting to, to play with that. It just takes a long time to build. Yeah, I, I, I think hour. we I think we need a special thing on the machine config operator because obviously that's different in OKD with Fedora. Um, I'm also interested in I think an interesting one might be is the catalogs. Because when we get the OKD catalog, which I'm hoping we're going to see movement on now, um, I, I think that would be another interesting one in how do I add my own custom operator into a catalog, um, which I think then comes on to what we're going to be talking about a little bit later on Ceph, because I don't believe there's an easy way to install Ceph to actually test it at the minute. Um, but so, yeah, and then as we talked about in the last meeting, um, I need to get on and um, start collecting, debugging, testing things, um, best practices, tips, tricks, hints, voodoo magic, whatever works to actually get a cluster up and running once it's um, not running. All right, any questions or comments or further thoughts on that? Um, I have one, one question about what we talked about just previously, removing the community repo. What is the trigger for that? Are we ready for that to happen or um, do you need yep. more time? <clears throat> nope, go. Okay. Do it now. Yeah, you've got everything copied over, so it's fine. Okay. Uh, well, if we're gonna archive it, we can, get, we can always get it, get the stuff, we're not gonna lose it. Sure. So archive it rather than delete it, then it's there, but it's closed for change. I just reached out to um, Christian Glombeck has admin privs and he can archive it. Excellent. So, archive. I just requested. Hey. And working group repo, that's going to wait until things are moved. Um, so I have a question for the group. If, if we look at the website, uh, moving on to an item that I have, if we look at uh, the website, if you look at the working group menu, it's like working groups. It's like OKD working groups, OKD working group. Uh, what I would like to do is, uh, you'll notice I added minutes in there. 
Um, and actually, I, I, get, I need to fix the way I did it. But I've started to add the minutes in there, and I'm setting up automation for it. Because although we can automate from HackMD an individual file going over, we still need to automate the updating of the index, right, so that people would have an index. Um, would anyone be opposed to me, and Brian, I'm looking at you in particular, um, changing this to the top menu being OKD working group and then a subgroups sub item that then links to the subgroups? Yeah, I think that, that would make sense. Um, because if, if we get more subgroups, then it gets, I mean, I was going to call that OK, the working group, the main working group. But I think it makes sense to have a subgroups heading and then all the subgroups underneath that. Yeah. OK. Anyone else have thoughts on that? And again, this is uh, if you go to the website, OKD.io, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items down on the left side there. So just changing that to be OKD working group and then about charter minutes and then subgroups. And then subgroups would have the subgroups there. Oh. oh, so are you going to move about charter and minutes into the working group? And oh, put so move them. Subgroup? So move it all up. Basically, and move everything up, and then have a subgroups sub menu under OKD working group. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Or it could. We could even. It seems kind of redundant to call it OKD working group. We could just call it working group the top menu item? Because, I mean, what other working group would it be that we would be hosting pages yeah, for? When I looked at it, I thought it was a little eye weird. Right. Does that make sense, Brian? Yeah. I mean, in, in the thing, I called it the primary working group. Because I don't think we've, we've got a name for, like, the main one. I mean, we call it the main or the primary or the... All the subgroups have a name. But we yeah. just call the working group or right. I, I don't know whether we need a something to signify it's the the, the main or the primary one or I don't know. What do folks think? Because otherwise you've got another context. If I just say the working group, if I'm within the documentation working group, I obviously mean the documentation working group. So then what do I call? the right. top level group, if we want to defer a decision to, I think right. we, we use the word main group in our meetings. Yeah. So I, I just think we have to sort of call it something other than just working group because. Yeah. No, Diane, do you have any thoughts? You've been around these waters a lot. I apologize. I was um, trying to close no. that archive, archive that thing. So I missed that conversation. Well, so the idea is um, we always have the top level sort of working group and then the subgroups. What would we call the top level working group as a reference? Like what, what would we, we always say the main group in conversation, but if we're going to talk about well, it. Or, I, yeah. always, I, I always think of it as the working group and everything else as sub working groups. Sub working group, okay. So that's um, that's how I've always referred to it, and, and I've seen other things done. We don't like have a technical oversight committee like the CNCF has or the Kubernetes things. We're not that complex um, yet. So yeah, I would yeah. stick to that. It's, it's sort of the dev working group too, right? You know, that is sort of the overall dev working group. The sub working groups are looking at particular facets of things, right. not OKD as a whole. Yeah. I always refer to it in the, when I post the videos online for this group, I always call it the subgroup, documentation subgroup. So I don't know. And then the other one is just the working group. OK, so then we can put a task on me to go through all the subgroups and change the name. Because I, if you go to the documentation overview, it says the documentation working group is responsible yeah. for. Yeah. So that needs to be the documentation sub subgroup. Yeah. Uh, sub working or. Uh, I hate this when it's. 
Yeah, I say subgroup be because the, the, there's too much working in it. I think because then it, it helps delineate them a little bit more if you just say subgroup yeah. within okay. the OKD working. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, and and is that? I mean, and you can make the change too, Brian, if you want while you're in there in terms of that menu. But I think that that will clarify yeah. things a lot. Um, yep. And minutes I accidentally did redundantly. It's actually like slash minutes, slash minutes. I need to fix that. I was doing this with a baby in arms, so I made some mistakes. Okay, there is a gotcha you might come against with the automation. Mm -hmm. um, currently, when there's any change, it does a full spell check, and it also does a link checker. If a site is down, like when Gate was having problems, it blocks the publish. Right. So that's just a gotcha to be aware of. If you if you look at the actions, if there's a failed action, um, you, you, we may encounter that with automation that we if you find some minutes don't get published. Yeah. Just be aware should, that that. We should put this in little uh, like the little notes section of the how to. I think there's like the how to contribute page that you set up, or or was it? There, there is a. But I'm oh, guessing yeah, the there's content only... guidelines page. We could put something in the yeah. content guidelines page. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Next on the agenda is um, okay. So here's the things that we need to communicate out. Right. So talking to Christian. Earlier today, we can't release any 4.9 since 4.10 was out. OKD has always followed this pattern of when that shift gets made and all of the infrastructure for testing gets, when it gets put in place as the main release, no more previous releases are done. Previous minor versions are done. So a 4.9 release is not going to be forthcoming to deal with that etcd issue. Um, the etcd, what is it, 5.0.1 to like 5.0.5, I think it is. is. So basically etcd under high load can drop uh, data from some of the members. Um, we've gotten questions about that, and so we need to communicate out that 4.9 is not going to be updated anymore. Uh, there won't be any future releases for it. And if, yeah, in the same breath, we have to point out that um, 4.10 is currently blocked by that bug there that I've linked to, um, the Bugzilla 4. So Christian actually tried to do a release this weekend, but ran into a 4.10 release this weekend, but ran into that um, OVS issue. So... We haven't really communicated anything out about how our release schedule has changed. And I think we should do that right now, uh, in the near future. Because right now there hasn't been a release for almost a month. And people don't know that we're sort of changing temporarily or whatever, changing hands. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking we write something up that <laughs> highlights these two particular things. Do, do we actually what, have what a was schedule? the OVS issue? I'm sorry, what? What was the OVS issue? So there's a link to the to the uh, bug, but it's basically a um, an issue of port binding. Uh, and so Mohit Cheth put in a, a bug on this, and apparently um, this yeah, is preventing 4.10. So there's a link to it in the notes, and Christian said that that's a, a showstopper for OKD um, release. Oh, all right, I reached out to the other. I have a question about that, but okay. But I know that there's other issues I think that are out there that are stopping us going forward, also. But okay. Right, and I so heard that one. Right, and so well, that was his response in terms of why he didn't cut an OKD. This last week. Um, I wonder so, if you can delete the one that's out there because if you look on the release pages, there's a failed release on that page. On the, um, on the releases still at, page? Oh, yeah. Okay, on, yeah. On, 
I don't know if you can delete that or not. It shows everything failed, but it's still out there. It's not the three, seven, and then the one from the weekend. Okay. All right. Let's, let's add that to our list of items to do. So what do folks think about communicating out the changes in the scheduling? Oh, the answer was it Brian that you asked. It, it was, Vadim was cutting them so regularly, like almost every weekend, that I think people are starting to notice that there's nothing coming out. So it's it's inferred. It's not really, yeah. Diane, go ahead. Um, so yeah, it it was inferred, and now that he's taking sort of a bit of a break from that, um, we're gonna have uh, probably a, a expectation management to do. Do on the the OKD.io site. Um, I think we made a provision for a bit of a blog. Um, is that correct, Brian? So if one or both of you, Brian or um, Jamie, want to write something up, um, we could put it there on the blog, and then I could amplify it through um, the OpenShift and the o OpenShift Commons um, Twitter handles, and the and you could do the OKD.io one as well, and we could get the word out that way if you wanted to do a to finally use that blog for something. I think that might be a this might be an appropriate time to do so. Um, that would be my my gut, and then start Bruce, getting. Okay, Bruce, I saw your hand up, and then Brian. Yeah, no, I think uh, uh, it's not. To my mind, the issue is not that it's been a long time between upgrades, but uh, basically we don't have any 4.10 upgrades that upgrade from anything. Uh, if you look at the 3.7 one, uh, and the reason that I didn't try it out is because the upgrades from everything fail um, fairly spectacularly and consistently. Oh, and of course, it also doesn't upgrade to anything. So it, it seems like not something that any sane person would want to try, uh, and certainly not in production. And uh, you say that because I upgraded all my all my clusters to 410. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, uh, well, no, I, yeah, I'm, go, so I'm going by what stuck. the documentation says. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, if you had good results, uh, including Ceph, because uh, I'm well, I'm Ceph's, running... a, Ceph's an interesting one. Right, because I'm I'm running that uh, not for the registry like you are, but uh, for uh, uh, provisioning. Uh, auto provisioning uh, uh, storage. I, I'm running uh, Ceph, and so uh, that would be a blocker for me for my production so, one. Bruce, can you do an FCOS standalone test of mounting to your Ceph for us? Because Shri, John, and I had asked as well. Uh, we were asking Shri to try it in that ticket, and he hasn't responded yet. So you might have other things going on. Uh, well, my my Ceph is is on the uh, like it's running on the cluster itself. Right, it's I don't not have standalone. A, I don't have sure. an, it's not standalone. Yeah, uh, all right. We need some, now, yeah, Diane, it, go ahead. And it would take Sorry. it would take more resources than I have to create a standalone one. Sure, got it, Diane. I just have a question for John Fortin. Um, you did upgrade to or you moved to four ten. Did I hear you say that? Everything, yeah, everything's on four ten. And is it running successfully, or is it? Yeah. Did it, yeah. It except did? for Seth, I didn't have any issues. The upgrade. How did you? How did you do the upgrade? I clicked on upgrade to four ten. Okay. And I'm running V3 IPI. I didn't have any issues. It was clean as clean as any update I've done, and cleaner than most. Okay. The, that's the three dash seven so one, right? And is the blog post. Uh, Diane, you broke up a little bit there. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to turn my video off. I, I'm at my, my mother's house, so I'm using lo-fi, not even <laughs> Wi-Fi. I was just going to like lo-fi. Um, so I, and, and, my, and my nephew's here, and he's probably gaming downstairs. So um, the uh, what I would suggest is that maybe um, we, we write a blog post talking about the thing, and then maybe have John Fort, Fortin if you can add a few words about your upgrade process and, you know, yeah. like that it was. I, yeah. Honestly, if I knew now what I knew then, I wouldn't have upgraded. Yeah, maybe, maybe say that too. I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> never against 
saying the truth. That is, you know, the war, you know, the warn the general surgeon's warning section too is yeah. like, you know, I did this, it went smooth, except now that I'm here, this is what I would, you know, warn people about. So, you know, that mm -hmm. that's uh, and I you know and that I think would be if we can come up with a blog post, you know, over the next week or so, I'd be thrilled um to to have. And and as always, honesty is the right way to go with this. You know, it gets you much further than mm -hmm. um than trying to make it look like a, an awesome everything went smashingly and now I'm happy I'm here party. So yeah, so maybe that that would be something we could collect with even if we did it um in HackMD as a, a blog post um collaboration or something. But so, that would Okay, so should we break these up into a so we'll have a separate document for upgrading to 410 and sort of where things stand with that. Um a separate thing that talks about 49 because that should be independent because whether it's 410 411, 412, there should be something out there in the blogosphere that says 49 is no longer um, being updated. Then, uh, since we don't have anyone that can do any Ceph testing, should we send something out, even if it's not a blog post, in some fashion saying, hey, is there someone in the community that can test this for us? And what we need specifically is someone to try testing FCOS directly mounting Ceph. To, to rule out that this is an FCOS issue on its own. Well, I thought that 3 said he had done that. I, I saw you, you ask. That. Did he respond? I saw you ask him, but I didn't. Let's look at that real quick. Uh, I'd have to go back and find it. Hold on. <laughs> I got it. I, hold on. I got it. I got it. Uh, uh, yeah, so you asked him, and I had actually asked him, I think, earlier in the conversation. Um, or elsewhere, maybe. Uh, you, uh, I think you responded. Yeah, so you responded two days ago. Can you try mounting this F, uh, mounting this FSS mount in a container in a standalone FCOS node? Yeah, that. Yeah, he did. A, I think he did a, a, a Ceph FS mount directly on directly on FCOS. I don't think he did it in a container. And I'm wondering whether there's an issue with um, the new Creo and with SE Linux. All right. So I had that. So that, that, that would so, be the, okay, in right. my mind the next test. Okay. Well, that you that could one. do, Bruce, because it's just mounting it uh, in the container. Uh, okay. So um, in standalone. Okay. So, right, so you, you're talking about 4.10, though, right? Yes. Okay. So I can, I can yeah, upgrade my test cluster. To uh, 4.10, uh, assuming it works, no problem with that. Uh, uh, and I'm trying to think vis visibility. Cause, you cause said my... there's a flag you could change that'll make it visible outside the cluster. Um, right. Jamie, can you throw that um, that discussion link in the chat? Yeah. I don't have it handy. And we don't no, need to get too deep it. into it here for yeah. the docs meeting, Agreed. but just if we if we feel we can we need to reach out, uh, let's reach out to the community and see if we can get someone uh, to test this. Okay, so what Jamie put up was just the uh, the thread link, which I have flagged in my uh, mail okay, anyway. Yeah. So things um, stopped right there with basically like, okay, is can this be mounted in the container? And st does it still have the issues? Setting network equals true, yeah. We'll take a look and let us know. Um, we don't have to okay. decide that right now, but if we can't yeah, get anyone within it. the group to test it, let's, does it make sense, let me ask, does it make sense to reach out to the community to try to get someone to test it? Because this has been lingering uh a, a bit now right and uh, I, think she be, says, I think it... yeah the the issue the the issue with it with that with the suggestion is the existing pvc mounts um and 
Anyway, so I'll, I'll, I'll have to look into it a little bit more because uh, uh, I've got sort of a handful of existing PVC mounts, so I'd hate to lose. Sure, understood. Uh, you might have to look at create a, creating a clean um, FCOS um, server, whatever. Uh, that's not, it doesn't have um, OKD installed on it and see if you can do a remote um, Creo um, mount on it or whatever. Mount. I'm not yeah. sure exactly how to do that. Yeah, I was going to say, I think if you go into the community, we have to be very, very clear what the ask is. Exactly. Make sure there's no amb amb ambiguous yep. instructions in terms of this is what we need you to do, A, B, C, D, E. Right. All right, well, let's look at that and see. Let's we'll, We can talk async on that one. Um, another one that came up is CRC, put ready containers. Are we, it seems like it's sort of stalled locally. I haven't had the time to deal with it. There's still mention of CRC on the, in the OKD documentation. And Charo did do a build in like November that apparently does not work anymore. Do we want to do a request for someone in the community to do code ready container build? Or does someone well, here I, or someone else in the main group have time to do one? Again, I, I think this is one of these because is somebody outside of Red Hat able to do that? Yes, because they I are. Think, well, because I think whenever there's been a change, you have to go in the source and things like that. And I, I remember the, the last time we built, he had to go and tweak something because there was a change in Fedora, or there was a change somewhere along the line. So yeah. it may not just be a case of running the build script. And what are we building it on, 4.9 or 4.10? Yeah. Well, but also like all these tweaks, shouldn't be necessary um, since there is a single node OCP capability, isn't there? I haven't tried it, but... Uh, I haven't tried it either. No. I, I think it was originally like in 4.8 4. maybe and slipped to 4.9 and presumably it actually made it in by now. Yeah, Diane, uh, go ahead. All right. The, on the, in Google chat, there's a little thing where you can put your hand up and that I can't find it here anymore. Um, in, in blue jeans, so I apologize. I just keep putting my hand up. So we're talking about CRC here, right? And um, I think the conversation that I had, had, and this is over a month old, um, with uh, uh, his name, Charo. Charo. Thank you. Brain is not coming. <laughs> was that people really weren't using it anymore? CRC. Um, yeah. So the thing is, is while you were gone. We had okay. like three different people pop up that were like, hey, this is in your documentation. Hey, this doesn't work. Hey, granted, it's only three people, but one thing we learn in, in at mm -hmm. least for me in radio, we learned it in radio is for every person that calls into the radio station, there's like a hundred people listening. And I think yep. you can use the same thing for, oh, yeah. know, for anything, right? Okay. So, so I just wanted to say that out loud because the last right. conversation I had, it was let's move everybody to, over to snow or whatever the acronym is for the single node. Right, OGF. and that, um, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Brian. Okay, I was, I was just gonna say, the, the one of the things just to be cognizant on, um, listening to the what's next in OpenShift, they did mention CRC and streamlining it somewhat, because I think the difference is, MicroShift is MicroShift, no UI, it is very, very much cut down. CRC has a lot of the stuff removed, like the machine set and things like that. So it's meant to be a lighter weight cluster. SNO is a full cluster, so you need more, much more resources, but it's on a single node, and then you've got the full yeah. node. So th they're your four flavors, going from full to micro. So, I, I mean, when I started this, I, I, I wanted CRC to work. It's just that I didn't have a single laptop that was beefy enough to run CRC because you can get it to run on a 16 gig MacBook Pro, but you can't do anything with it. And I also found that the, the file system 
I filled up and the Mac virtualization, the Hypervert engine, doesn't allow you to expand the disk very easily. So you end up being bound with, you don't have enough resources in CRC to actually do anything useful other than start a server that you can use the console on and then do nothing with. Um, but I think there are quite a lot of people, and this was a discussion that come into the what's next for OpenShift video. There are people that want a local cluster for testing and playing with. Again, a lot of people, they want to learn, they want the admin access, but within their work situation or their university situation, they get a developer or a user. So I think there's a lot of people do want that local access, but they don't have a workstation with 256 gig of memory yeah. and... Yeah, uh, it's it's this, we've heard this story before. So if three people raise their hands, Jamie, that makes me happy, three people raise their hands. So I just didn't want us to be having this uh, conversation if there wasn't any interest in CRC there anymore. Were, there were three people that came into the channel and I think there was one discussion item uh, asking about it, all in a, a short period of time. It was actually kind of quirky. It was all like within the yeah. same week. Yeah, um, you, Bruce, you take someone's toys away, you take a toy away, and um, or threaten to take a toy away, then you find out who's actually playing with the toy. So, yeah, this um, is true. Well, the issue that they had was that Charo's build stopped working, I think, because of a certificate issue. Right. Yeah. So, Bruce, you you had your word. It looked like you yeah. No, it, it it will it will time out. Uh, I think it works for I don't know a couple of months and then the certificate times out, and that's okay. been an ongoing well known issue, which means that the only way that it will continue to work is if somebody continually rebuilds it. Um, but I think that uh, one difficulty is that what you don't know is that these people that are unhappy because they can't install it, whether or not once they install it and see how it works with the resources they have, if they would then be happy. That's true. Um, That's true. Like what, what uh, like I, I, sp I spent, uh, I guess the last month, uh, I've got a module on uh, Kubernetes implementation uh, for my students. And uh, so uh, I, I, I've, exp I've played with, uh, uh, the uh, Minikube, which I guess all of the Red Hat demos use, uh, and uh, uh, this time I use Kind, you know, Kubernetes and Docker. Uh, both those are very similar and work reasonably well. Uh, the Minikube does have a console that you can install uh, separately. Um, and uh, like I, ha I have once built uh the uh you know charo's thing and it was it never worked well on my on my macbook pro with 32 gig of memory um and uh the uh well um when microcube uh, sorry micro shift Hello. when micro shift came up um i tried that and it didn't quite work on the Mac. It's the DNS uh, uh, failed to come up, uh, but it was close. And it, it could be that that uh, you know if you add in the the console as a separate add-on, that you might get closer than uh, you know to what the users actually want to play with. Like I think it's not just a matter of uh, you know rebuilding something that exists. Uh, if we're going to take it seriously, we probably need to get a working group to slim it down uh, considerably. Well, so I guess for the purposes of this group, I think we should figure out, right now we have documentation to something that doesn't work, and that documentation actually points to a Fedora repo that, um, I, I think the Dado guys hooked that up so that we could put CRC up there, uh, but like I think it was Neil, uh, but Charo and Neil I think worked that out separately, and those details are not written anywhere. So and it's Neil, not like we have access to go and delete that. Right. Neil was we, the one that brought up uh, Microchip too, right? Right. Exactly. Right. 
So I think what we need, well, first off, in the bigger picture, I think if we're going to manage projects or sub-projects, we need to have internal documentation about who has access to what and where things live so that we don't get into a situation like this where we're kind of like, okay, how do we delete it? Well, we got to reach out to one of these other folks. And, you know, Charo's really busy right now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Neil will probably be at the main meeting next week. We can touch base with him. Yeah. Char Charles has documentation on how to uh, build CRC. He does. I've got, and I've linked that to people, and we could include that if we were going to try to reach out to people. Um, but I, I guess my question is, is do we want to try to reach out to the community to see if someone wants to help towards it? Diane, or sorry, Brian, then Diane. Yeah, yeah I, I was just going to say um, <clears throat> the link to the Charles thing is actually in the CRC subgroup section of OKD.io. <clears throat> I've linked to his, um, his his content there, but I think one of the one of the problems is the CRC subgroup never actually got established. Um, we said we needed one, and we I put it on the site, and I don't think there's ever been a meeting of it, and there's nobody really driving that. Um, now that the, the sort of so I, I think that is one thing yeah. that if you're putting a communication out. We need volunteers to actually go love CRC because I think there is still life in it. It looks like Red Hat have plans for CRC for OpenShift going forward in terms of making it more usable. So I think it's not time to sunset it by the sound of it because it's an active project within Red Hat for OpenShift that they want, as Bruce said, they want to slim down. They want to make it more usable on a workstation. I think the positioning that Microsoft is an edge. It's not. It's not your your sort of cut down developer workstation. It's an edge, um, sort of package. So, so I'm going to add on to that. Is I think I agree with everything Brian was saying. Is pretty much what I was going to say. I don't want to sunset it yet, especially if three people pop their heads up. Um, and it is part of the conversation in the OpenShift roadmap, so there are Red Hatters working on it. Um, there is another group, and I'm just going to ask this question naively. Over the month I was gone, did anyone from the Operate First team reach out to Karsten, Wade, or any of those folks? They didn't. Okay. So there is a, um, a, a group of people at Red Hat who are spinning up a community of um, build and CI, CD patterns called Operate First. Um, and they have a cloud that they can build stuff on. Um, and I have, and I told them that when I was well and not traveling, that I would get them here because I was hoping that um, with the problem of like Vadim and everybody else um, to be able to do community builds of things um, that we owned and managed. Um, I'm thinking out of the box here that maybe. Um, they, their cloud is based off of uh, Mass Open Cloud in Boston. It is an, an OpenShift cloud. They have resources, and they were looking for projects that maybe getting them to take Charo's um, information um, might be a good candidate to see if they are viable partners to collaborate with. If, you know, like they'll give some resources, and if they have interns and stuff at um, Boston College or whatever that would be interested in this. This sounds like a small enough packageable project that has lots of moving bits, but like if Dato still can get us a place to post the results, or if we end up posting it on this mass open cloud thing um, that operate first team, and it, the guy's name is Karsten Wade and Marcel Hill. They run that project within Red Hat, and then there's Tom Cool is another guy, and he's actually going to speak at KubeCon about it. But I could pitch to them that they reach work with this the CRC group or just come to this docs group and maybe they would take on the building of CRC for us as a proof of concept that they can you know that we can figure out how to do something and that way the community could manage on operate first the build process for this because I was worried about broaching the subject of building OKD on this without having any experience um, and CRC seems like a small enough thing. Does that sound reasonable to people, that's, or am I? 
that sounds reasonable. And it's and Diane, you were not at the the main meeting, and you might not have talked to Christian at all. But <coughs> at, the, at the working group meeting, Christian said that there are internal discussions of something that might change with OKD that will make it more community accessible yeah. in terms of development. So yeah, if yeah. if yeah, so if that goes through, then then it would make more sense to focus on another project. Um, mm -hmm. For what you're talking about, so yeah, 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 yeah. No, that would be that. That that's yeah. So I've been listening in on those other conversations too, and uh, you know I, I hesitate to say anything because sometimes they don't come to fruition. Don't, yeah, and just we'll wait and see. Yeah, we'll wait and see, and um, I'm hopeful, ever hopeful. But I think that that this might be a good project to introduce Karsten and Marcel and Tom into if people are willing and then maybe we can get a tiny iota of Garo's time to um, help them understand what he did and what the build process was, is and then um, wrench the hosting of it either leave it over on Fedora land or host it over on the operate first cloud and repoint things to where they should be but this sounds like a good candidate um, you know so, because it's something that is really homeless. homeless. So there, there you go. That was my pitch for Operate First. If you've never heard about it before, this is your first mention of it. Um, Google it on Red Hat, and you'll find them. They have a landing page somewhere. All right. Let's let's do it. I say. Anyone else okay, have thoughts I'm, on that? Pitch it. All right, we've got uh, nine minutes, so I want to get through the, the next few things that we have here. Uh, Twitter, we talked about survey. So I've messaged yep. Driti, and she has not responded to me. We've had that survey sitting around since November. I don't actually have the, the link to it anymore or anything. I don't know where it lives, but I'd like to get a copy and just have us push it out, even if Driti is not able to participate in the. So, um, Diane, could you try reaching out to her as well? Yeah, I'll see if I can find her. She was, um, everybody keeps getting subcommed into other projects, so I'll see where she's at right now. And I'll yeah. hit, hit her if up. you could just get a copy of it, it, then we could take over it, you know, because she was going to do the work, but I think she's really busy. So, but it would be nice to get that survey out right around, you know, um, you know, the, the next couple of months, because there's a lot happening, and then we could get a sense of direction of, of where people would like us to go. You know, yeah. and, and Vadim did give me some numbers. He's going to check on them, but the, the amount of OKD usage sounds pretty significant, actually more than I would have thought. So um, this survey might give us a sense of who's actively using it and, and willing to put a voice um, to that. Uh, and then the other thing was bare metal testers. Um, do we put out a call for bare metal testers? Because that's another thing that keeps coming up is that people uh, are asking, you know, about bare metal and have questions about bare metal. And I feel like we aren't really able to answer them because we don't have enough bare metal testing. If, and granted, if that's, that's it's a unique thing because bare metal is more unique than any of the other platforms. But there's some basic stuff that just we don't have documentation for or don't mention or can't support when the community asks us for help. Is, is that something, um, I, I know we don't put stuff out to the, the mailing list. Is that something we could, but it, it might be it, an ask as part of the survey or just an ask on the mailing list. Is anyone deploying to bare metal? Um, if so, could you? Yeah, that's, I think we can do it on the mailing list, and then if maybe we could do something um, on Twitter that just says, hey, if you're doing OKD on bare metal, can you shoot us a message or respond to this or something? Yeah. Because there's folks that aren't on the working group mailing list that I'm sure are using. Okay. Um, is that the whole agenda? I had one other thing I wanted to sneak in. Uh, go right ahead. Because Brian is in the UK. Um, Brian, I am getting the agenda together for two UK-based um, OpenShift Commons gatherings, one in Dublin and one in London. 
and I didn't know if you were aware of those, but um, I, I don't. Uh, just as a FYI, don't call Dublin UK because they get really upset about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good point. All right. So, um, so I, I don't know if you're interested in participating in either of those. They're in June and July. Certainly, the London one. Yes. Um, okay. Um, the, the depending where things are with travel, um, getting to Dublin, but certainly the London one, yes. Okay, so I will reach out to you offline, and um, you may be the OKD rep there. Um, okay. Just to do something that would be fun um, to make. Does that, that mean I can? I, does that mean I can actually get a T-shirt now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You don't have yep. a T-shirt yet, Brian? Oh, my God. I, I don't have a T-shirt. Oh, for Pete's sake. All right. Well, <laughs> anyways, we will make sure that happens at some point. I'm, time for a new run of T-shirts, I think. Okay, cool. That's good. So that was, we have, I, I think July is, I, I can't even remember which one is in July and one is in beginning of June, end of July, beginning of June. But they're far enough apart that um, you can't come just to one if you're traveling internationally. And stay. It'll that'd be great. Cool. Excellent. And shameless plug for me in the chat um, is a link to because I don't I don't know that Christian uh, Hernandez has uh, a page that he puts these on, but uh, I'm going to be on uh, GitOps Guide to the Galaxy on Thursday, uh, yeah, talking sure. about Argo CD on OKD and uh, OpenShift. So, Did someone? Someone who has it handy put the um, link to Charo's CRC build in instructions so I can have that. Okay. They're on okd.io. If you go to the CRC. Okay. Here, I'll grab it real quick for you. Uh, CRC. Which one is it under, Brian? It's under the CRC subgroup. Oh, right, 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 right. Working group, CRC build. Uh, there's there's yeah, a link to the new. I can see the installation stuff. I can't see the build stuff. I guess I'm in the wrong place. I well, I see. Actually, I Is think there... it's actually linked to that, that video. Oh, so there's a link to the video. In the video, is there the. the... I think, I thought in the description of the video, there was the. I might be wrong, though. No, hold on one second. I'll, I'll uh, see. But if not, we should put it on that page. Yeah. Yeah. Take a, one second here. Yeah. I can't find my own stuff. Is. <coughs> Oh, shoot. Lost it. I forget what his um what his blog was called. Um upstream without a paddle. Up, yeah, up, yeah, exactly. There we go. Lab projects. Deploy Ceph Storage. He actually has one on deploying Ceph Storage. We could put two together and be like, do this, then do this. All right, thank you. I just couldn't find it and you know I wasn't totally brain dead, but slightly brain dead today still with the flu. Yeah, there we go. All right, so, so we are just about it. On, I'll put that on that page as well. So it's... Yeah, that would be good. All right. Any last minute things? We're about at time. Yeah, answer. at some point we need a plan to work on and, how we get to we, the new Git repo. Yeah, and I was going to talk about that this meeting, but we had so much other stuff come up. Um, let's uh, start formulating a plan. It might be best to do start uh, just async, like just start like I, a document and just just start discussion. If someone's got a got a thought, just create a discussion thing that we can all pile in on and. Let's okay, get an agreement that. on um, how we're going to migrate it. Because what I don't want to do is have two sets of stuff going in parallel, and everything everyone gets confused. So we need a right. a, a certain cutover. 
Okay. All right, we'll start a discussion item on that. Brian, you want to go ahead and take the lead on that? Create a discussion okay. item for it. Okay. I'll, I'll no, do I'll do it. That's fine. I'll do it. Well, no, I, I, I've just, I, I haven't actually got around to creating the other discussion item I agreed to do last week. So. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll I'll do this one, you do the other one, and then you do the other one. Okay. we'll split up the work. So <laughs> it's fine. It's all good. We're going to get more people someday, I promise. All right, folks, thanks for an awesome meeting. Um, and I'm going to stop the recording here.